Hi, losers. Welcome to episode 10. Uh, before we get going into the episode, I just want to remind you guys that we are on Facebook. So stop by there, check us out. We got some pretty cool pictures and uh, you know bios and links that you can get a little more information on the Losers of Initiative. Uh, also, if you have any questions, we have an email. You can directly talk to us through this email at losersofinitiative at gmail.com. And, you know, we, we, we are very open to get responses from you guys. If you have some questions that uh, you, you'd like answered, we can definitely respond to those. Or you hear something in an episode that you don't understand, we'll clear, clarify that. You know, if we get enough uh, similar questions, we may even do an episode of Brad Explains for you. Um, other than that, we appreciate you listening and keep following us along as hopefully you're enjoying the story. So let's get to it. All right, so Ovac, you've decided to stare into the empty void that is in this alcove down below. And this is what you see. All right. After a second or so of blackness, uh, starting to materialize it, uh, a writhing amorphous form of sickly mauves and violets starts to come into focus for you. It seems to be stretching its formless members out as if to, to come and touch you, but it is it is sunken within the, the blackness. I need you to go ahead and roll a d20. Do I want high? You do. All right, I rolled a 16. 16, okay. It doesn't affect you per se as any magical effect, uh, but it is, it is very eerie and very creepy. Uh, you notice one specific thing about it. Uh, as as you're staring curiously into it, it seems that it's it's almost the amorphous form is is very tenderly. Uh, I don't want to say tentacles, more like like legs coming out, uh, specifically like almost spider like. So some sort of like evil spider ghost figure who seems to be reaching out of the blackness toward you. It's going to latch onto my face. Uh, I don't know. Are you just going to sit there and keep staring at this? I mean, how close does it get? It's getting closer. No, I mean, uh, I'm not going to let it touch me. Right. Uh, as it gets closer, I'm going to like back up or try to. Okay. Okay. You, you, you back up, but you're having trouble moving your gaze from it. But I'm able to, like, back up. Yeah, you back up, but you, you can't... You turn your body, and you start to try and turn your head, but your eyes won't go away from it. And and Grug and Zerosi, and I guess Oaklock, if he can, you can, you see that, that Ovac seems to be struggling to, to break his gaze, but he cannot. Do we see any of the, the stuff coming no. out of the... Okay. No. This no. is exactly what happened to Oaklock before he started getting old. Grug thinks this looks bad. <laughs> So no one's gonna uh, do actually anything. no no <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna actually just essentially tackle Ovac. Okay, so you run up and you hit him, boom, and knock him sideways, and uh, yeah, Ovac, your vision is broken as as Zerosi is on top of you. And so do I remember everything that yep, was. Yep, everything going? you okay. saw. Yep. Okay. There was a <laughs> there was some kind of like gooey monster trying to grab me. It did, like, Krug. spider legs. Krug wonders, how big was it? It was, like, the size of a, a raccoon. Maybe, like, a small fox. <laughs> <laughs> Krug knows the size of those animals. The, there's just something down there that I, I do not like. All right, so, uh... I, I am not going to look back in that hole. I, its gaze was too strong for me. Krug think maybe someone with more magical ability... I, peak. I concur with you on that one. I, I would be okay with looking in. Now that we know what's up, you guys just have to be ready to pull me away. Grug promise he will, and then he winks at Ovac. <laughs> I will pull you away as fast as you pulled me away. Okay, I mean... Neeb is still like, let's go just, in just screaming. Let me out of here! 
Krug say, Neeb, it okay. And em- Emerson is, uh, he's just kind of standing, not up on the stairs or anything, like looking like, what is going on? He's he's totally out of his element. He's some civilian guy. Krug say, no worry. We are a very dysfunctional party. <laughs> He's, he's looking at Oak Lock in terror. Yeah. What, what happened to him? All right, so I'll set up to do that. I am trusting the party. Okay, so Zerosi is going to look and peer into the darkness just as Ovac has done and Oak Lock has done. Grug say good luck. Okay, so you peer into the darkness. Roll a d20. How's an 18? That's really high. Okay, so you're peering in the darkness, and you see this kind of fading into view, uh, like an amorphous humanoid figure with wispy arms that that sort of are materializing as it's coming into view, into focus, and it's hard to make out any detail. It's almost got like a like human spideriness to it. As the arms sort of start reaching out toward you, as it gets, as it, as it, the, the, the image gets bigger and bigger, like it's getting closer and closer. I'll start backing up like he did. I'll be like, no means no! <laughs> and yeah, same thing. You can't turn your eyes away. I, I can't. You I can't, try. You can't. And then I tackle him. Okay. So yeah, boom. Ovac knocks Zerosi. So Zerosi, you saw the same thing that Ovac saw. So it's not dependent. I don't know why we're not turning old. Hmm. Yeah, that is weird. <laughs> yeah, it, it's almost like uh, Oak Lock basically had a spell on him and ran into like an anti-magic field. <laughs> <laughs> or or the anti-magic field ran into Oak Lock. Maybe, Grug think maybe if it touch you, you get old. That is, that is <laughs> true, but... I still think it was kind of a suicide murder scenario. <laughs> Either he ran into uh, anti magic, or anti magic was ran into him. <laughs> let's Drug just think we'll never know. I, I think we just at this point let's just make Neeb watch it and let's not tackle Neeb. We just gonna sacrifice a, a he's child? An, he's an orc. Emerson starts whistling and walking away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Emerson's in the corner. Hey, Emerson, Grug think hey he's, a, he's, in a, he's in a closed room. <laughs> I'm a drifter. <laughs> well, and, I mean, worst case scenario, we have this old elf that can't move. Just push him in there. That's pr- that's pretty evil, guys. So when you're looking into the darkness, okay, and the form starts to appear, does the darkness kind of fade away around it, or no? Does the it the just form seems to it? like f- come into focus with its light coming from it. It's generating its own light, this form is. Okay, so our options are to let it touch one of us, an elderly dude, or a child. and the Or, non- or an engineer. He's, and yeah, the non-evil like options are us. Unless Neeb wants to. Alright, so through conversation and bad decision making, as this party does, we've decided that Grug is now going to go look into the blackness and h- hopes that he lo- rolls low so that he sees something different than what the other two saw. Okay. No, it's not okay. So Grug gets down on all fours. You guys, uh, both Ovac and Zerosi, are standing on either side of him. Okay. And he's on all fours. He's looking into the blackness. He's going to pause. Grug, sure, Ovac, want Grug to do this? I do not want you to do this, but... Because remember, you guys are also still feeling that fear in your gut still from this room. Well, and Grug hasn't liked this room from the beginning. And, and you, Grug, has heard both accounts of what has happened. The, 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 the fear just came right back. Yeah, as soon as the yeah. Grug think maybe Zerosi try again. <laughs> I mean, if if you do not want to do it, I I can do it again. I do not. No, no. Grug think he can do it. He be strong today. All right, I. I have faith in you. Grug say shut up, Neeb. And then he's going to look into the <laughs> into the blackness. Yeah, because Neeb's still screaming. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What's going on? Let me out. He's, almost, he's, he's not like freaking out anymore, screaming, let me out, let me out. He just wants to see. Now he wants to know what's going on. He's missing out on all sorts of cool stuff. 
All right. All right, so Grug, you stare into the blackness, and Ovac and Zorosi are ready to, to either cover your eyes or knock you out or whatever. Uh, Jeez, knock me out. God damn. Out of the way. Oh, oh okay. Okay, and so you're going to go ahead and roll a d20. You want high. 11. 11. All right, <clears throat> so you're sitting there staring, and once again you see this this ghostly form just start to appear. Uh, it, it, even just looking at the colors, it makes you sort of nauseous with, with just... Ugh, it makes you feel uneasy. And then the, the wispy, tenderly-like, spider-like arms sort of materialize, and it seems to be getting closer and closer to you. Um, I'm going to try to speak okay. whilst down here. What do you say? Grug no like spiders. Just something to see if I can. Okay. Uh, there is no response. Do I even hear myself speak? Uh, in your head. Right, but I'm not actually but like you, you're speaking. not. you're not okay. sure if you're saying it. Yeah, okay. I mean, there's nothing more I can do until they knock. I mean, I'm going to start right. backing away. That's okay. kind of been the, the key. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to start trying to shimmy backwards if I can. Okay. okay I'm, I'm just going to see if I can, like, cover over his eyes. I mean, like, if that'll stop. Okay, so yeah, you, you put your hand completely covering his eyes, and you are immediately snap out of it. Mm. So basically, if you can't see it, then you can look away. Grug saw the same thing you saw. Maybe Grug not special. Or maybe we are all special. I, I, I have run out of ideas Grug for this. Grug too. But we are trapped in here. It's either through the uh, lizardmen... Or so as you as you say that and gesture toward the door, we're trapped in here, and it's either the lizardman. You kind of gesture toward the door, and you notice on the altar is a gem that was not there before. It's about the size of a softball, sort of a. It's like a red gem with like a black starburst in the middle of it. Guys, did do you see this? Am I am I going insane? Oh, see what Grug like. <laughs> Grug like shinies. You should uh, maybe go grab it. Grug follow Ovac. He's going to go grab it. Okay. So the instant you touch the gem, there is a shock wave, an explosion of concussive proportions that blows you away from the gem. Grug says, excuse me. <laughs> uh, and also knocking you, Zerosi, and you, Ovac, down. Boom. Boom. Shattering the wall of ice. Neeb is standing there. Ooh. <laughs> right. Uh, the concussive force was, was, was powerful. But oddly enough, you take no damage. And the gem is still there. Drugs say it was a bad Taco Tuesday. What's your alignment? What? Why? Why would that matter? I'm not telling you. You're not the GM. Um, <laughs> I just asked because Zerosi, as a character, knows... Well, well, maybe the specific alignment names aren't prevalent. Like, you don't talk about them in day-to-day. -day. Oh, I'm a lawful neutral character, you know? <laughs> but, like, your, your type has effect on sentient objects, and some will violently reject right, those right. who do not fit yeah. correctly. Well, I'm, yeah, so I'm chaotic good. So do we want, like, a... Probably um, neutral. <laughs> neutral? Yeah. Everybody looks at OVAC. Yeah, everybody looks okay. at OVAC. Yeah. The lawful neutral man of the Well, because, I mean, he's chaotic no, no, neutral. No, Good tendencies. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I'll grab it. Okay. So, OVAC goes up after after just, uh, Grug touches it, and boom, explosion. Wall of ice shatters. Everybody gets knocked down. Like, what the hell was that? I don't know. Why don't you grab it? <laughs> I mean, just just think about it. It's kind of odd, but uh, yeah. So Ovac's like, "What? Okay." So you go up. You're kind of nervous because you saw what just happened. Okay. But no damage was done, so it was like correct. This poor engineer. Oh, oh he, yeah, what happened to him? He slid all the way. He's like, oh, I know. Halfway but he's across, just watching the peeking around the shit show corner. party. Are we you have. saying he's in the shadows? Yes. Yes, he is in the shadows. Grug said, get out of the shadows. It's dangerous. <laughs> I'm not going over there. I saw what happened. You guys are talking about sp 
spider figures in the darkness trying to grab your face and you can't look away. Grog now, say no. Grog say no. <laughs> but this is crazy. <laughs> so Ovat goes to grab the gem. So as soon as you touch the gem, another shock force, boom, knocking everybody back. And the gem, this time the gem shatters into thousands of little powder-like pieces. Yeah, actually, this time it would have knocked Neeb down, too, because the... And then he gets back up. Wow, what was that, Mr. Ovac? That was neat! <laughs> I, I, I do not know. We are trying to figure it out. It uh, does not like good-hearted people, apparently. Oh. Okay. What's in the hole? I saw that elf get real old. Is he okay? He's, you know, the Oaklock still is just lying there. <laughs> yeah. How did the uh, how did he get so old? Do you know? Uh, he was looking into the thing, and then and then he his he started to get all wrinkly, and his hair got all thin, and then he got real old all of a sudden, and then he fell over. Damn it! Story checks out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Damn. And then Zerosi came up to try and help him, and then Zerosi saw me, and I got in trouble. Yeah, I, I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't question anything yeah. because checks out. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> and it's like a it's like a dust now, like the gem turned into a dust, or is yeah. it like tiny shards? Nope, it's it's powdered. Um, I mean, what's in the hole? Grug say, Neeb, not now. Well, I want to know what's in the hole. Can I look? Can I go see? Come on, Mister Ovac, I want to look. Let me look. Neeb, I've, I've told you many times. Go stand up against the wall. I do not want Last you around Last time I here. did that, Mr. Zerosi put an ice wall around me. I don't want to do that. I, okay, he will not do that, I swear. <laughs> no. as, as, as I start, like, wiggling. As, essentially jazz hands. Yeah. <laughs> uh, are you sure? He yes. looks like he's going to do it. Go stand over there, and I point in some just general direction. Okay. He reluctantly does so. Keep so. keep shooting glances at everybody. What are you doing with uh, Oaklock's body? You've got to s- gently slid him to. He's still up on the top platform by the altar, but he's not by the hole. He's kind of by the side of the altar now. Uh, is he not getting better? No. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I want to make sure he's comfortable, but like <laughs> I don't know what else to do with him. Change his adult diaper. It's his fault that he looked into the darkness. <laughs> so, last episode we were messing around with uh, taking the shadows away. When I felt that, when Grug felt the breeze or whatever it was that nudged past him. What if we do something like that and try and get all the shadows out of the room? See if there is a shadow figure somewhere within the room. Yeah, I mean, I I don't well, know what else. The thing to is, do. though, is when Grug felt the thing on his shoulder. He had a continual light coin in his hand. You were probably the spot where there was the least shadows. So it wasn't yeah. like he was in the shadows. He was where there but was then no there shadows. was the figure that Zerosi saw and everything. Maybe Krug didn't feel. I don't know. It was just a thought. Magic sucks, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> but I mean, like, you know, I have four torches. We have the continual light. Mm. Did we see the continual light coin in there? No, in the with the thing. Nope. Okay, I didn't think so. You didn't see any. It's blackness. This, the 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 figure that sort of just uh, came into focus, materialized, was like floating in blackness. There was oh, nothing okay. but okay. blackness, and the figure. I don't know. I mean, we haven't really checked the room all the way either, though. Like, right. Zerosi was just kind of wandering along the walls. Yeah, he made it about halfway along one wall. <laughs> what if we just continue checking everything? See if there's. Another way out or something? Yeah. So you're gonna cast more light and check everything? Yeah, I'll do. I'll do. Well, I'll uh, light my four torches. I have four torches. And then Emerson, Grug, Ovac, and Zerosi could all carry a torch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. And then we'll just search the walls and see if there's like a hidden door or something. All right. So you light the torches, uh, hand them out. Everybody starts searching. So as you begin search, about. Uh, about a minute after you're searching, uh, you hear uh, from Neeb, like a, a a cry of panic. It's, it's what it sounds like. And everybody spins, and you see Neeb standing up. He was apparently squatted down, looking into the blackness. 
And he like stands up and he's got his hands in his air, hands in the air wave, and he says, "Mr. Ovac, I think I did a bad thing." And I instantly and go right running. right after he says that, kind of just barreling over him, just pushing him down to the ground as it barrels over him, is a black widow spider. Hmm. It's about the size of a horse, maybe a little larger. And it, it doesn't like it doesn't attack him or anything. It just kind of like just walks over him as it climbs up onto the altar. Oh, it's kind of straddling the altar because it's so big. Let's go ahead and roll some initiative. All right. Two. Twelve. Ten. Eight. Four. So who got a two? I did. All right. I'm so gonna... you are sixty feet away because you're on the other side of the room. Perfect. Throw my hammer. Okay, you're throwing your hammer. <laughs> Armor class one. That's a miss. So you throw it and it just kind of, you know, catches air as it flies around. and It'll return to you next round. Okay, so let's see. Do I go north towards Rosi or south toward Grug? South toward Grug it is. So it's, it's as big. It's bigger than a horse. But it's still really fast as, yeah. it, as it moves with its shiny black body with the red hourglass figure and dr its mandibles, its its fangs are dripping with venom, waiting to inject it. Into I probably it. don't have any of my stuff out, do I? No, you had a torch and you were searching the wall. So yeah. 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 Okay. So, but it it is on you instantly. <laughs> oh my! That's a that's a natural twenty. <laughs> Hot dang, that's a hit. So, yeah, I mean, it just it gets to you instantly and sinks its bite into your shoulder or something. 12 points of damage. And actually make a saving throw versus poison immediately. Roll the natural one. That is a one. The what only thing I can roll Yeah, your to poison not saving throw it. is a two or higher on a 20-sided die. Yeah. And you rolled a one. Rolled a one. Okay. So, yeah, it, you, you guys basically see this huge Black Widow spider just go over and tackle... Grug, who falls lifeless to the ground. Emerson drops his torch and runs toward the door. Get us out of here! <laughs> Zeros? Um, I'm gonna move up behind the altar to it to like kind of hide behind it and check on Neeb. Okay. All right. So you see that Neeb is lying on the ground, motionless. But does he seem like alive? Yeah, he's, he's, bre breathing. he's breathing, but he's lying on the ground motionless. Okay, that's it. New round. I got a six. Twelve. <laughs> okay, yeah, whatever, Grug. Five. Five. We tied. Roll again. Thirteen. Eleven. I win. All right, so it immediately... I was trying to stay hidden behind the altar. No, it's actually going to chase Emerson. So Emerson's not quite to the door yet because he had to run like 40 feet. Uh, oh, my God. Another natural 20. Two natural 20s for attacks in a row. I don't like the spider. This needs to, this needs to stop. Uh, it's a demon spider. So, yeah, it just basically tackles Emerson in the middle of the room. It catches him in the middle of the room, and it just gets on him and just fangs him in the back, like in between the shoulder blades in the back. And he gurgles for a second and falls motionless to the ground. All right. Grug's turn. Yeah, go ahead, Greg. Uh, I'm going to lay here. Okay, you're done. All right. Ovac. So how far away is Grug from me? Grug is 50 feet from you. Emerson is 20 feet from you. So I can do half movement and cast? Correct. Okay. So that's uh, perfect because you said 50. Yep. All right. So I'm going to do that. So you move the max as you cast, but unfortunately, that's going to put you right by the spider. Like, melee with the spider. Yep. I have Kay. faith in my poison so you, saves. So you move up and throw a... Throw you a shouldn't. Throw a neutralized poison. <laughs> <laughs> throw a neutralized poison on Grug uh, as your action. Right, You do that right as the spider kind of runs by and drops Emerson right beside you. And Zerosi? I am going to cast Dispel Magic on Neeb. And then move over towards Grug. If Dispel Magic on Neeb. You think he's magically knocked out? Or it's something to do with the magical connection that's keeping the spider in the room. Or allowing the spider to exist. Okay. You cast Dispel Magic on Neeb. Nothing happens. 
And I'm going to run up to, towards Grug. And so you make cast sure a spell magic, dead. nothing happens, and then you start making your way toward Grug. All right, so that ends that round, so we're going to go ahead and roll initiative again. Ten. Five. Six. Okay, so I cast it, caught my hammer last time. I'm going to do two attacks on the spider since it's right next Ooh, to me. Okay. Okay. Gosh, darn it. That is a negative nine. Hit. And then an armor class one. Miss. So I do 14 damage. Okay. And I'm checking on Grug. That was... All right, so... Make sure he's alive. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, it's hard to tell. Uh, he's foamed at the mouth a little bit. A little frothy. Uh, his eyes are, are very dilated. But he's breathing. Well, as long as he seems alive, that's about as much as I think I can... Yeah. He's alive right now. He is alive. You don't know if he's alive and dying, or the poison would have killed him, but the neutralized poison stabilized him. But it's, it's not him. like it doesn't look like I could ban- like bandage yeah. him up. I mean, he is yeah. what he is. I did what I can. Made sure it wasn't like oh, stop him from bleeding through the neck where the spider bit him. Yeah, no. Nope. There, that's what <laughs> I did. <mean. laughs> Okay. All right, carry on. If he dies, I'll just animate him again, and we'll have a barbarian back for the fight. <laughs> a zombie barbarian. Okay, so you check Grug. Uh, he's he's down, but he's still breathing, and he's he looks kind of messed up. Uh, and then you kind of glance, get a picture of the situation. You see in the middle of the room, Emerson's down. The, the Black Widow spider is kind of raising its front forelegs while it's standing on its back forelegs as it's swatting at Ovac, because Ovac's tiny compared to this big thing. So it's going to go ahead and see if it rolls another natural 20. <laughs> Three in a row. It's going to bite feeling lucky. OVAC. I know. Uh, armor class positive one. That's a miss. So it misses. <laughs> you have your shield raised now. Shield's up. Hammer's in hand. The runes are glowing extra oh, bright right oh, yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, they, they glow according to how panicked you are. So it's basically like the staring at the sun. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So we're going to go ahead and roll initiative as you're engaged in melee with the giant spider. I rolled a five. Three. Four. Uh, I'm going to cast protection from evil on myself. Okay. So you throw up protection from evil and move into the melee. Uh, yeah, kind of halfway. Not actually <laughs> in the melee. No, I'm closing the distance. Let's not go crazy here. <laughs> not okay. melee per se. All right, so it's turn. Nom, nom, nom. Armaglass negative three. That's a hit. 14 points of damage, taking you to 55. And go ahead and make a poison saving throw immediately. Ten. And your poison saves a two or higher yep. on a 20-sided. So so you take the damage, and the poison doesn't seem to affect you. All right, I'm going to uh, swing twice. Hammer time. God darn it. Well. Mixed emotions. That one is terrible. Armor class negative 15. That's not terrible at all. Uh, armor class 1. That's a miss. Uh, that is a 14 damage. Okay. And it is a new round. 9. 4. 9. 6. 2. Uh-oh. Okay, so it goes last. So, Ovac, you want to go first? Yeah, I'll go. Armor class negative 1. Nope. And then negative 15. Yes. And then 14. Okay. I'm now going to run up and position myself behind Ovac and cast Protection from Evil on Ovac. On Ovac. Okay. That's your second first level spell. Krug 2, Krug 2. So is that 2 or 1? 2. So your armor class is negative 4 effective, and it gives you 2 bonus to all saving throws. Okay. And it is now its turn. Chompy, chompy. Armor class negative one is a miss. Okay, initiative. Oh. oh. Ten. Six. Ten. Oh, again, ten. Ten. Four. So it was Rosi first. Now I am going to actually take the time to maneuver myself behind it. And- okay, hopefully it's not watching you. All right, so it's turn. It is actually going to attack you instead. Okay. <laughs> so it moves to attack you. Uh, armor class negative two. That's a miss. I've got protection, protection from, from evil. evil. <laughs> 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 
Sweet. So now Ovac can backstab. <laughs> With that hammer. With my hammer. <laughs> or kind of side smash. Side smash. Side smash. Anyways, I'm going to attack. So that's a... Uh, that's an eight. Negative eight. <laughs> Negative Sorry. eight to hit. And then one. That's so. a miss. And then I guess since it attacked me, I, I'm still going to continue to try to... 14 like, damage. Give up my... Like maybe move behind a pillar. Or, yeah. You know, just kind of... Make it difficult for this thing to keep going at you. And if it does keep going at you, position it so that that OVAC is in a good spot to hit. Yeah. It. Well, let's find out. Yeah, it's staying on you. Are you going to attack it? Yeah. Because it's a, you, you, you're like moving and you see that it's not letting its eyes off you. Okay. So, you're gonna so yeah, I'm going to attack it. Armor class, negative a bunch and negative a bunch. That's a negative... I can't even think negative right now. Six seven. and seven? Yeah, six and seven. Both hits. Uh, so that is five and seven. So 12 damage. Okay. So two slashes with it. It kind of rears back. All right, initiative, guys. Eight. I'm going to spend this round trying to, you know, same deal. If it follows me and attacks, then I'll attack back. But otherwise, I'm trying to not have okay. it be me Let's that is attacking. I got an 11. So actually, Ovac, you get to go first. All right. Uh, that's uh, that's a hit, and then that's uh, an eight. Negative eight. Negative eight's a hit. So that is 32 damage. Ooh, damn. All right, so it is going to attack. It's Rosie again. So it attacks you and misses. <laughs> Even okay. without your protection from evil. I'll, I'll attack back then. Uh, that's an armor class uh, eight. Miss. And an armor class uh, seven. Miss. All right, so two misses from the Zerosi man. So it's initiative time. What if this spider is just like a manifestation of the, the goo in the black hole and we just actually have to kill Neeb to end it? Anyways, I got a six. I got an eight. I got a seven. Six, seven, eight. All right. I'm going to two attack. Uh, those are both hits. Hooray! And that is 31 damage. Okay. And Zerosi will actually cast Invisibility and continue to try and get away from it. Okay, so you cast Invisibility. So, yeah, you become invisible and it, it spins and attacks Ovac. Armor class negative 9. That's a hit. 10 points of damage. And a poison save. A nat 20. Oh, <laughs> All right, so Zerosi has cast Invisible and starts to move around the spider. So initiative. Two. And I win. I got an eight. So backstabs. Uh, so main hand got a negative five before modification. Off hand got a two. So off hand misses, but main hand does hit. So D8 plus I'm gonna, two. I'm going to roll a one. D8 yeah. plus two times five. Boom! He rolled a one, so that's three times five, 15 damage. You could have done 50. <laughs> could have. But you did 15. Okay. Stab. And thusly making you visible. All right. But I didn't do as much, so maybe you won't pay attention. <laughs> Armor class negative nine and negative seven. Both hits. That is 31 damage. Damn. Yeah, it's looking pretty bad. <laughs> it's got like spider guts juicing out of it and stuff, but it, it's unfazed. It doesn't even doesn't even blink. <laughs> it turns to go at Zerosi. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Maybe it's hungry for some. Uh, negative eight. That's a hit. Five points of damage. That's not so bad. And a poison saving throw. Ladies and gentlemen, he has to roll a ten or higher. Uh, eight. 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 Eight or higher. or higher on 20 sided. He rolled a 15. I got a 15. So the modifiers. You still made your save. I knew I would. You made it by seven, so you're okay. All right, initiative. Six. I'm going to just attack. I win. Okay. I got a nine, so. Uh, armor class one is my best. Miss. Or hit, but no, no effect. Uh, net 20 and then a negative 12. Yeah. Both of those are solid. Okay, okay, good. Good. So that is, what is that, 24? So that's 27. 
Okay. So, whack, whack. The spider shudders, shivers, and collapses onto the ground, its legs curling up. I'm going to back away from the spider. Okay. <laughs> Gross. I'm going to run over to Emerson and uh, neutralize poison. There you go. Mark off the spell. So, Emerson and Grug are both alive, but very dizzy inside. You guys actually didn't take enough hit points to kill you. Uh, Emerson, not having very many hit points, is is bad off from the from the actual wound that the spider caused. Not enough to kill him, but enough to take him very, very low. He's not very powerful. Grog, you're still at what? 59? Yeah, 59. Uh, of 133. Right. So you're you're okay, uh, but yeah, you're, you're the, the grogginess as the as the poison is being magically purged from your system, and you come to uh, shaking your head, and the big dead spider corpse is huge spider corpse in the middle of the room. I do come to though. Yeah, already. Oh, okay. I'm gonna hold up my pendant and I'm gonna use it one time on Emerson. Okay. Do you heal more than six points? <laughs> Uh, I rolled six. Okay, yeah, he's fine. He's fully healed. He doesn't have very many hit points. Um, I would like to actually go up to the alcove and see if it's still all blacked out. Okay, so as you go up to the alcove, you see Neeb lying there. And he's he's like, you notice that he's like, his eyes closed are on the ground, and he he's, he's, seems to be like sweating and, and mumbling something under his breath that you can't hear. And he's like moving around on the ground. Like a very, very mild seizure. Ovek, I think you should come take a look at this. I go running over. Okay. You see Neeb lying on his back, eyes closed, kind of twitching a, a little bit. And he, and he's you notice that he's actually kind of pale and sweaty. And he's mumbling like... Can I, like, get in close and, like, hear what he's saying? Okay, so you kind of put your ear right up to his his mouth and it is a language that you do not understand and it's 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 definitely not like orcish it's quite the opposite it's almost make a wisdom check <laughs> what'd you roll low four okay so you you remember hearing something similar to this in your acolyte days when the high priest of the temple of moradin was communing with Moradin and speaking, and they were speaking to each other. Apparently, it's that language. Gotcha. I think that the uh, Neeb here might have come into contact with the god of this temple, and he's now communicating with him. Grug, wonder what he's saying. I do not know. I don't speak this horrid language. Uh, it doesn't sound horrible. But, I mean, it's an evil temple. and Okay. But as you're there, you also look at the, the alcove, and it's still black. Well, we've gone nowhere. Drink of the spider blood and become one with the spider god. <laughs> Zorosi says that. That's apparently. <laughs> I, I do not agree with that. I don't want that. Uh, Grug, think maybe we move Neeb away from the altar. We can do that. I, I don't know what it will accomplish. All right. So you guys are, you know, Ovac and and Krug lift up Neeb, and you kind of move him off the stairs, down the stairs, kind of gently rest him on the ground, about halfway between Spider Body and Evil Altar. <laughs> and uh, you know, Oaklock is still there, being old person shaky. Oh, yeah, still just, still, still just alive. Yeah. Yep. And Emerson, Emerson's like. <laughs> hold his shoulder like oh god even though he's fully healed he's like oh I can't believe that thing bit me that's just oh god <laughs> got like the jibblies uh, and you guys are hmm what to do what to do we are in fact what to do what to do I'm running out of ideas I'm about ready to let this black thing touch my face yeah I'm almost there too cause I'm yeah. like well if yeah. I could communicate with this dude well before we do anything I'm going to heal up. <laughs> okay. So throwing out some heals. Yeah, I'd like some. What are you even at? 37. Out of what? 53. Good Lord. Please hold as Nate heals and we get back to the story.
All right, so now that Nate's healed up a little bit, um, I am at 132 of 133. I'm at 82 of 84. And I am at 51 of 53. And I have all the hit points I want. (laughs) It helps to be God. I know. My regeneration? Yes. Okay. (laughs) So, Rosie, do you have like a a mind read spell or like a telepathic link? Clairvoyance. Are you talking about to see into the orb? No, he's talking talking about like speaking. What's going on? What? Well, no. What's going on in Neeb's mind is what I was. Oh, or with Neeb? No. Okay. (laughs) Either way, no. I've looked. I I wish. All right. Well, then, do you want to uh, clairvoyance and see what's going on in the other room? Nope. (laughs) (laughs) I suppose I can. Okay. Clairvoyance. And you look out into the orc room. And you see bodies and bodies strewn about everywhere. Uh, And there are no signs of the lizard men anywhere other than the dead ones lying everywhere. But no signs of living lizard men. Uh, And you see that there are three orcs kind of walking around, poking at bodies and stuff, and one of them is Gorzag, one of them is Marl, and there's another one. It appears that the orcs came out victorious, but at heavy losses, only three remain. Gorzag, Marl, and one of their friends. Do we maybe want to get them in here? Grog think maybe they assist us. If you want to talk to them about your cowardice, that's fine. Says the one who didn't even go to the battle. Exactly. So I didn't retreat either. <laughs> um, can we open the door from the inside? No, you cannot. Yep. Without magical it. means. Yeah, I was just thinking about that. Knock spell would open the door. If only somebody had that. Grug know how to do that. <laughs> he goes up to the door and yeah, just knocks on the door. But you have to cast it, Grug. So Grug's going to think real hard, squint his eyes, and then knock in the air. <laughs> knock in the air in front of the door? Yeah. Grug casting spell. <laughs> if you want us to go get them, I, I could definitely open this door. Grug think they'd be safer in here than if the lizard men attack. But Grug also think Big Dead Spider almost dies. So Grug don't know. Grug mixed them I cast knock on the door. Okay. Zrosi waves his hands and says his magic words, and the door cracks open. Grog, maybe you could uh, go persuade them to come join us. Yeah, I'll go out there and talk so to you them. Just tell them we got locked in the room. Finger finger grab this partially open door and pull it yeah. the rest of the way open. Yeah. Okay. And I'll open it all the way now. Okay. Now it's all, all the way open. And, and you kind of start walking out. I'm going to go out there and kind of see them and wave to them. And, and they're, they've got several scratches and bite marks on them. And, it, you know, through the course of the fighting, you know, they took many, many wounds. Um, yeah, you see the third the third orc who you recognize as one of the orcs that was there, but you don't you didn't you don't know him. He's got his arm in like a sling and that they make shifted out of some clothing and stuff. And you're like I'm gonna go up to him and uh, kinda pat him probably go tomorrow as the leader. Kinda pat him on the shoulder and the back and be like Grug Grug, sorry for your loss. Grug tried to help, but there are too many. I don't know why there were so many, and I don't know where they came from. There was not that many before. I think there's some magic behind. Me want to go check. See their see their lair. Mm. Grug be happy to help, but uh, but first. Morrow is not able to go. There are many, many still around. Grug need help checking out Evil Room. Uh, Maybe Morrow be safe in there. No. With Gorzag. Morrow will not go into that room. Morrow will not like that room. Grug got the evil under control, though. Grug think it's safe now. It's not, it's not safe. It's not safe at all. Grug think, what if lizard men come up? Now there are only three? Then maybe Mar- 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 never Mar- stand a chance. We have decided that maybe it is time to die. Dying and fight with opponent that you can see is much more brave than dying in magic fight that you cannot control. But Grug think Maro been through so much already. Maybe Maro live more. Sucks to be an orc, doesn't it? 
Grug Wonder, Marl Sure. Safety in numbers. Mm. No. Grug, protect you. This is where we wait. We will not go into evil room. Well, if we die out here, it was meant to be that way. Grug, say if you need anything, just holler. Would like to explore the room north where the lizard men came from. Don't have strength to do so. You look able. Grug is. Grug is. Uh. Grug only know how to follow Ovac, so. <laughs> Grug gonna. <laughs> Grug's Grug, not decision maker. Grug, Grug can not say yes or no. Uh, so. Grug go check. <laughs> Grug be right back and uh, maybe Grug go with Marl North Cave. So so Grug went out to use his charisma to convince him to come in and instead Marl uses his charisma to get yeah, Grug I'll to charisma come out. him and Grug's like, I don't know what to do here. <laughs> Checkmate. So I'm going to go. Uh, <laughs> so he's going to go back into the uh, the room and tell these guys what happened. You yeah. know, they so, tried to convince him to come in here. They they don't want to come in here. They'd rather die out there, but they need help. They want to go investigate the caves of where the lizardmen cave or where the where the lizardmen came from. And uh Krug's gonna use his charisma and persuasion to say maybe this room is done. I mean maybe there's nothing more we can do in this room and maybe that's what we need to do is go to Lizardmen. I mean, there might be a part of the key to figuring out this room within their lair. It, it might be the way to go. I do believe that leaving this room could be short-sighted. Like, we're, we're definitely not done here. Right. But... And I mean, we, we're not done, without, but... Without... I just... I cannot figure out how to reasonably safely move forward with this. Grug agree. Without taking unreasonable risks. Yeah, Grug also think me not look so good. Grug almost die. He think he not sure. O'Clock look like Grug when he take a long bath. And uh, Grug kind of think Emerson being a baby. I, I agree with all of those statements. Grug worried we only lose more if we stay here. I agree. I, I think we need to venture off to other areas to see if we can find something to help us in this room. Grug, Grug's going to feel big for the first time in his life and say, Grug, say, okay, let's go. Like, he's making the call, but... I will I will follow you this time, Grug. So, we'll go back out. So, what do we want to do with everybody, then? Just leave him here? Yeah. Take, take him out into the cave outside, maybe? I mean, yeah, maybe we, we should could take, take him out... out. You know, yeah, Emerson's you're, gonna come with. You're worried about Oaklock, though. He's his he's his frailty. Yeah, let's take let's take Neeb, Oaklock out and put him I, uh, outside the door. You're gonna have to come up with a way to carry Oaklock because carrying him, you could break his bones. For Oaklock, I believe we can. I'll cast levitate on him, and then we can safely just kind of. I'll say I'll safely shuffle him across the room and out to where we think he's at least somewhat safer to spend the remainder of his days. <laughs> so yeah, you go cast Levitate, that kind of raise him up an inch off the ground or so as he's floating on a, a invisible cloud, and then you'll just gently push him so there's no force on his bones or anything like that. And then Grug will carry And then Grug, Grug, Grug can carry Neeb easily. You know, Is he still child. talking and yeah, twitching he's and everything? Mumbling and sweating and kind Does of he go pale. outside of the room okay? Does he go outside of the room okay? Like is yeah. there an issue as you yeah. cross yeah, like the door? a barrier. Nope. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. So set him. And then down. Emerson follows you guys. Grug think these guys need protection. Emerson, you stay. Stay in the room? No, Grug. <laughs> yes. What, close his door. <laughs> <laughs> With the orcs. Okay, yeah, so okay, so we're going to move those guys into, and then the, after into we... the middle of the big orc chamber. Right. And when you guys go back out there, you see the orcs are kind of moving the bodies of the, the, the dead lizard men and the other dead orcs to the barricade. Yeah, that's They're what I was a just thinking. adding to the barricade, basically. Uh, Grug, think you orcs stay here. Protect Neeb, protect O'Clock, protect Emerson. 
Ovac and Grug and Zorosi go check out caves to the north with Lizardmen. And Marl says, I think that's a good idea. But Marl will appreciate it. Grug knows he thought of it himself. Grug, go now. And he's going to start walking off. I follow. Zorosi, follow Grug. Yeah. <laughs> Grug's feeling pretty good right now. Feeling pretty good. So there's darkness ahead, so you're going to have to pull out the coin. Yep, coin's out. Coin. And then I have my bastard sword in the other hand. Bastard sword in one hand, coin in the other, raised up. as like a torch, a bright torch in front of you. And you're leading the way with Ovac behind and Zerosi bringing up the rear. Do you have your bow out, or are you still going swords? Swords. Okay. Yeah. If I need range, I have spells. Okay. So, <clears throat> the lizard men portion of this natural cavern complex isn't a big open room like the orcs room was. There's three passageways leading north out of the orc room comp, you know, area of the natural cavern complex. Uh, and those three passageways kind of connect and interconnect, and there's passageways all windy. Some are big, some are small. Right, it's just kind of leading into, I don't want to say a maze, but definitely a tangle of passageways leading away from the orcs portion. Okay. So you, you actually travel for about five minutes of, you know, several intersections and some are, some are one person wide passageways. Others are 20 foot wide passageways. And you go for about five minutes of traveling through this windy area. And then it opens up into nowhere near the large size of the orc room, but a, a, a definite like probably 50 foot by 50 foot roughly because it's natural caverny, you know, stalactites, stalagmites, you know, jagged walls uh, area. And there are like probably 20 passageways leading out of here in all directions all the way around it. Uh, except for the very middle of the north wall. The very middle of the north wall is there's like a, a, a large alcove area where there is an underground river that runs through it. So basically, you know, there's a there's a river that kind of is an underground river, but but there's no the ceiling comes all the way down. So like the only the only spot of this quote unquote river that has openness above it is when it enters this room. How for how long? Uh, about twenty foot section. Okay, there's about a twenty foot section, and it's about. 15 feet wide where there's water running through this room it looks like it you know completely enclosed water tube hits this room becomes exposed to the open air hey look there's a river there and then continues onward through another water tube leaving the room and it's flowing it's flowing actually pretty fast Grug thinks maybe we go for a swim Okay, and there's, like I said, there's there are many, many, many exits. Some are ground level. Some are actually kind of raised up higher. You know, some have little platforms, balconies, so to speak, that if you come out of, you're standing on before you have to drop down into this room. So this apparently is like the main hub of the lizard men area. The ceiling itself is about 40 feet up. Is there any bedding or anything in this room? Negative. That's what makes me think that the There's, water would go somewhere else. There are lots of bones strewn about. What kind of bones can I tell? Uh, Animal, humanoid human. size. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because, yeah, I mean, if this is like a hub where they come to eat whatever and and then they go on... Yeah, their, there's no bedding, there's no any... There's no yeah, under their sleeping quarters kind of a thing. So but there help. are, you know... Dozens, dozens and dozens of entranceways, caves and leading into this room. Right. So this might be like where they come and they eat and they socialize and then they go back to sleep or whatever into their little cubby holes that are everywhere. Oh, so this is like the living room, essentially. Like a hive. So then going in the, the water wouldn't necessarily be leading anywhere. But it's a way out if we start getting overrun. Maybe. I don't know. It's just a thought. I say we investigate one of the cubbies. One of the passages? Yeah. Okay. You pick. You got the undergroundiness. <laughs> just a random one. 18. Okay. Cool. Hole number 18. Happens to be a ground level one that's nearby. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> so you, Surprisingly enough. Yeah. So you guys kind of make your way over to it, and it's dark inside, but then again, it's dark right here. So, you know, Grug's going to go first, holding the coin up with his sword ready, right. expecting 
something bad inside there. Right. Okay. As you go in, you see the the narrow entryway. The passage is only about six feet wide, and then it opens up into a room that's about it's about fifteen foot diameter, roughly circular, natural caverny kind of room. Uh, in one corner, there's like a clutch of eggs, uh, about the size of like ostrich eggs, imagine. And then against one wall is a body of a lizard man. It doesn't seem to be breathing. You're like, look at it for a second. It might be dead. It doesn't have any like gashes in it or anything, but it's just lying there not breathing. And that's it. And it smells really bad in here. Like, is there any other way out besides this one way? Nope. That's it. Stinky, stinky in here. Should we maybe smash those eggs so they don't, uh... Krug, wonder if this one's alive. Poke it with your sword. I'm gonna poke it with my sword. Just kind of, not to stab it, but just to kind of nudge yeah, it. Yeah, poke it and see if it gets up. Right. No, it just kind of wiggles a little bit. doesn't move. Wait, like the body wiggles no, and it reacts? Wi- no, it it, you're, it wiggles because you're pushing it wiggle. Right. Not, not like it's of its own accord. Grug say, okay, while well you smash eggs, Grug make sure this one's dead. Okay. I'm right, just going to just whatever. Run it through. Coup de gras or, yeah, cut okay. its head off or whatever you yeah. have to do to make sure that it's dead. Yeah, it's it. you just jab it through the chest with your sword and it does not even react. Yeah. Then I'll just smash the eggs. Okay. Some of them had almost ready to hatch babies in it. Okay, so we're going to go back away from the room then toward the central hub again. Okay. Grand Central Station, if you will. All right. So I, you, you want to try a different one? I mean, what? Yeah, I, I, I am interested, regardless, in at least checking out the water. The, the water, like I, okay. I have the ability. You could scout it. You no, might still scout. No it. sooner do you say that, <laughs> I at least want to check out the water. Then emerging from the water, I cast invisibility. Are two carrion crawlers? Imagine a. Uh, a caterpillar that's about seven or eight feet long with a series of tentacles around its mouth hole area. And those tentacles are p- paralyzing to the touch. Huh. Well, that's not good. So typically what they do is carrion crawls will move in, hit you with it, wrap you up with the tentacles, and then you'll be paralyzed, and they will literally eat you as you're lying there paralyzed. Keeping you paralyzed with their tentacles as their mouth in the middle is eating you. So a short bit of backstory there on Zerosi. Literally, the first fight he ever encountered was against the carrion crawler. Almost wiped the entire party. So carrion crawlers can be potentially very bad. Okay, so the carrion crawlers, two carrion crawlers, kind of bigger ones than than you're used to seeing, uh, emerge, pull themselves up out of the out of the stream. Apparently, they were because they have like sort of suction cup claw feet, so they can walk th- underwater or along the edges of riverbanks and stuff. Uh, but yeah, they, they had pulled themselves up out of the stream and are coming into the room. Are they coming for us? Do they see us? Oh yeah, they're coming straight for you guys. Apparently they smelled you or sensed you or whatever they do. I don't know. There's the sense. vibrations. Vibrations. And we're actually going to find out what happens next week. Ah, ah come on. ready for combat. Ball, but like I don't know what else to do with him. Change his adult diaper. It's his fault that he looked into the darkness. <laughs> Just to uh, cover his face up with a pillow. <laughs> he can't fight. And then put push push down on it. <laughs> sleep, sleep. I'm casting the sleep spell. <laughs> How many spells? Are you? Ah, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys kind of move Neeb to you know by the spider body. <laughs> we'll just empty out the carcass no, and put him inside so he if stays we, warm. If we put him on the altar, that's farther away. And then we just use one of the spider legs to pierce his heart. Thus ending his connection with his god. Hmm. Yeah, we do that. <laughs> <laughs> what bad could happen? <laughs>